Maybe you never heard of a little 2014 stealth game called Styx Master of Shadows, but its sequel, Styx Shards of Darkness, is worth paying attention to. With great level design and grotesquely fun abilities for its goblin hero, it is mostly a pleasure to skulk through. So the gate is closed all night? Yeah. Nobody is allowed near the warehouse. Not everybody seems happy about that down there. The broad visual strokes of this fantasy land resemble classic Tolkien, and the take developer Cyanide presents here is a dark one suited to a game so drenched in shadows. In cutscenes and fourth wall breaking remarks, You stop killing me, and I won't tell anyone what you did with that apple pie. Styx comes off as a welcome foil to all the dour and untrustworthy folks around him. Cyanide unfortunately doesn't get as much mileage out of this rich setting and lore as you'd expect in a 15 hour game. The opening levels of Shards of Darkness present wonders of vertical design, complete with sticks shimmying and grappling his way through lovingly crafted levels that take hours to explore. They're stuffed with chests, wardrobes, and baskets for sticks to hide in and alarms to booby trap. The ledge jumping and rope swinging never feels quite as precise as it should, but fortunately they're usually small elements of the richly interactive maps. But about halfway through, it essentially starts to recycle the earlier levels. For the most part, the only differences are the introduction of new foes, like armored enemies who can't be killed by a dagger, or dwarves who can sniff out these smelly sticks if he creeps too close. Something. Keep them peeled. There's a green skin loose around here. Good thing the stealth gameplay is so appealing. The golem-like sneaking is the best thing about Shards of Darkness, as it allows our green friend to dart under tables and jump into crannies his larger adversaries can't. But it is the secondary abilities where the true fun comes in. After unlocking skills, Styx can barf out and take control of a clone of himself, or poison guards by spewing bile in their water or food. He could also turn invisible in a tight spot, but it's such a massive drain on Styx's powers that it rarely feels overpowered. Styx can also craft weapons with the limited supplies he finds, including helpful traps that take out armored guards, or darts that provide some ranged attacks. Shards of Darkness includes a serviceable cooperative mode, but it works better on some missions than others. And those where Styx just has to stay completely out of sight, another goblin hanging around can be more frustrating than helpful, and there aren't any good tricks to help each other stay hidden. <laughs> Best of all, Styx no longer gets locked into combat as he did in Master of Shadows. It's mostly a case of waiting to parry at the right time, and if you miss, you're dead, so it's best to run if you can. It's a shame the enemies don't differ much from each other. Shards of Darkness includes everything from drunken pirates to heavily armored elves and burly dwarves, but when fighting or killing them stealthily, they all behave about the same. At least the AI is fairly decent this time around. Sometimes I'd catch them bugged and walking in tiny circles, doing almost nothing when I killed their friends in front of them. Or, most annoyingly, I'd see an ogre standing on air when the trapdoor he was supposed to fall through opened. But for the most part, Shards of Darkness requires no tricks to learn the secrets of its stealth. Don't be seen. That's about it, and as it should be. This diplomatic summit is putting our people Styx Shards of Darkness greatly resembles the earlier Styx Master of Shadows, but Cyanide improved the gameplay this time around with the inclusion of craftable weapons, letting you flee from combat and expanded abilities. It presents an interesting world to explore, but wastes its potential by recycling environments from early missions. Co-op mode is fun, but only selectively, as some stealth-only missions seem far more manageable on one's own. For more stealth game shenanigans, stick with IGN.